right, and welcome to this edition of the Native News Update on this Thursday, May 19th. I'm your host for today's program, and today we go right to Window Rock, Arizona, where we talk with Marley Shabala of the Navajo Times. Welcome to the Native News Update, Marley Shabala. It's been a while since uh, we've had you on this show, and it's been a while since I've been down there to skin a sheep. But can you tell me a little bit about what's going on in Navajo country? Okay. Um, you have to add to all of your, um, I was going to say, well, listeners and viewers. Indeed. And also relatives are out there, in-laws, you know, you have to add. And, um, well, today's paper is full of news about um, the Navajo Nation finally receiving some new jails. And um, the Navajo Nation hasn't had any new jails for the past 30 years. So um, it's not like the criminals are running around loose, but there was a point where police officers were getting pretty frustrated with arresting individuals and what, and seeing them, then, you know, what kind of, but I shouldn't. What they do is see them, uh, they were seeing them released because of overcrowding issues. Yeah, yeah. And and some of the jails um, had to be, were um, court ordered for closure. Right. Because they were in such bad shape. But also the, um, the legal services here when it filed a lawsuit years ago uh, uh, saying that the prisoners were being held in inhumane conditions. And I think that's something that um, nationally and internationally, it's not, and, and I especially think in Indian country, since we look at ourselves as relatives always, you know, and, and I'm not saying that, you know, um, they shouldn't be punished, you know, but they should be treated fairly, right. um, you know, and, and you wouldn't want them put in a, in a holding facility that was unsafe or that, you know, didn't provide for them. So it costs us money, you know, it costs us money. And so the the first new jail is going to be up in Tuba City, which is in right. Western. It's going to be the, what they, they're they saying that it's going to be the biggest one on the reservation with 132 beds. And there's it's going to be 144 square feet and it's going to cost $61 million. But it's also going to have enough space for rehabilitation programs, which is really good. And um, that one should be cl- completed in August 2012. And then they're also building another one in Kienta, which is up around, maybe people have been up around the Monument Valley area. It'll be up in that area. But that one is just going to be a jail. Right. Oh, and when, it's, 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 when you talk about rehabilitation services, uh, you're talking about what, like AODA work training programs, or what What? What does rehabilitative services in, in entail well for now what they've been doing and and what we've been um hearing and and finding out as at the navajo times is that because of the lack of jail space the prosecutors and law enforcement and the judicial services have had to prioritize to be held in the jails and so it's the ones that have committed the most um severe uh crimes right. and most of that they listed are the ones where you have you know sexual um that are related to assault with battery um deadly weapons mainly that where, where someone is really um, life threatened with their lives and so those uh, some of the programs that they've talked about involve um and i think in, in across just maybe nationally not just in indian country but a lot of lot of the crime definitely and also counseling for violence, you know, for um, and perhaps, you know, sometimes for a while they're, they're having sweat lodges right. here on the reservation. So a wide variety of programs. Is it kind of ironic that uh, many of the prisons in Iraq and Afghanistan have been rebuilt? They're built by the United States and now finally they're maybe coming home to help out the Navajo Nation. Is there a certain amount of ironicness in all that? Oh, yeah. Oops. Yeah. Um, and th- this is not a new request. Like I, like I said, this um, the tribe has been asking for jail since um, I started reporting, which was, you know, I've been here over 25 years, but I've been doing stories about it for about 20 years. And so I can see this is like, wow, you know, this is this is big news. So it's one of our top stories. Oh, interesting. people out there, yeah. 
Yeah. And then another top story, which deals with um, a huge amount of time, deals with veterans. And I think this is something that's also nationally. The lack of service and among the veterans and tribal governments themselves, I think not just the Navajo, but perhaps other tribes, they feel that the federal government should um, be responsible for, you know, the financial assistance, the medical assistance, the, the transportation. And a lot of, uh, for as long as I've known, veterans have been asking for a veterans hospital on the reservation or one that's a lot closer because they're traveling between, um, I think, two and maybe five to six hours. And, and we're on the reservation, where do they have, okay, on the reservation, where do they have to go now? They have to go perhaps to Albuquerque, which is about a three and a half hour drive. And that's just from Winter Rock, where I'm at. Right. And this is on the outskirts of the reservation. If you go in further into the reservation, then it can be up to, you know, a attack on an additional four hours. And if they're dealing with specialties, um, perhaps with heart, then they might have to go all the way down to Tucson, which from just Winter Rock is about a seven hour drive. Right. And elderly, and they, you know, who's going to help drive them? Their wives who may be about their same age. And the gas prices, which, you know, are, are pretty high there. And so the veterans, um, they met with President um, Shelley um, yesterday. And one of our reporters, who was actually on your show the, um, the other week or so, Noel Smith had to drive about four hours up to an area called Kaibato. And up there, you know, uh, she heard the same message that we've been printing in the paper for over 20 years that, that the is not providing services to these veterans. They're not helping with financial assistance, with housing. But then again, the tribal leadership believes that those um, responsibilities belong to the federal government because they're the ones that are taking these young men and women off to war. Right. Uh, Noel did a wonderful job on that Native News update. You want to compliment her for that. What kind of a percentage of uh, service people or service record do the Nav does the Navajo Nation have? Well, the, the, I think a huge criticism of this um, Tribal Veterans Office, and it's sad, it's sad because it's, there are veterans in there, and so you would think that they would be sympathetic to their comrades, and they would be collecting all this data so that they could send it to the federal government and use it to say, hey, we have this many veterans and they're suffering from these categories of medical problems or mental problems, and we need funding. But they haven't collected that data. Right. They give us that data. I see. I can't. So it's yeah. I was going to say I can't imagine that uh, either the uh, equation of the Seminole to Al Qaeda or the latest Geronimo Fiasco in the military service uh, has made uh, any of the Navajos any happier. Uh, it's not the number one issue, but it certainly infuriates Indian country when they have that kind of stuff happen. Any reaction from down that way? Oh, yeah. You know, I I have a delegate who is in the New Mexico portion of the reservation, and he was very upset, and he would like to put together legislation to send to Washington to say that he felt that it was it was shameful, it was disgraceful, it was disrespectful, and he went through you know his relatives who have gone to the service, and I have interviewed Navajo Nation um, co-talkers who have said that you know they were treated, um, they were they were discriminated against um, by the term chief awards who I've interviewed and and asked them the same question. Well, you know, did, did you were you treated any differently? And they said, yeah, everybody called us chief. And, and they just, right. you know, they didn't like that. They didn't, they didn't feel it was appropriate. And they said, you know, it's, it, they don't understand the term. And, um, and even though they felt it was joking and, you know, right. to be part of the group, they didn't say anything. It is difficult to deal with. Yeah. Well, it's an ongoing issue. Uh, tell me a little bit about, I'm always impressed by the Navajo Nation and its uh, sports activities, and you can almost perpetually tell me that someone's won a tournament. What's, uh, let's go to the lighter end of things. What's, is there anything new announcement about someone winning something down that way? Oh, yeah. Yeah. In fact, um, one, of the, um, one of the teams, um, and actually we have, you know, our, our, our Native people, are involved in sports, not just on the reservation, but off the right. reservation. 
and and, and one of the teams, um, one of the uh, she's a young um, Diné lady, and she works. She goes. She's at Kirky, New Mexico High School, and she is a pitcher. And they and the coach recognized that you know as one of the pitchers, she is the one that led their team to be a um, to win the state cha- state title in the New Mexico Class Five A state championship. And this little, uh, this young lady's name is um, Kateria El Sosi. And um, I don't know if the viewers can see her, you know, I don't know. But if you want to, you know, go to our website and you'll be able to see some of these great. Great stories on that. Of, of some of them. What was that? I was going to say, we can go to there and see a lot of the results. Give us the website again. Oh, it's um, www.navajotimes.com. Okay. And, uh, and then there, there was a young, a young man who is um, a senior at Tupa City High School, and that's in the western part, in the portion of the reservation. And he actually went to an Arizona State track meet down in Mesa at the community college, and he broke the um, record in the um, – he took uh, – he uh, has a new state record in the two-mile race, and this happened last Saturday in Division Three. And his time was eight minutes forty eight seconds, and um, he almost broke another record, which was um, has been held for the past twenty eight years. Is this is in the sixteen hundred meter record, and he was only three tenths of a second off. Wow. But and his name is, is um, he's from two, you know, snatched up by them, and his name is Billy Orman. Okay. But he said he's going to try again, and he's going to, um, and this is going to be his final attempt. And it'll be um, at the um, May, uh, Meet of Champions, and that's an Arizona Interscholastic Association meet for state champions. And that's from all divisions. That's going to be on May 23rd in Queens Creek, Arizona. So he says he's, you know, he's going to try for it, but, you know, if he doesn't get, get it, he's He's fine with good athlete. His dad was helping him, you know, and the people yeah. were cheering him on that it even, you know, he wasn't, they, they weren't from Tuba City, but, you know, this guy was outstanding. So they were cheering him on. Uh, wonderful athletes are a wonderful inspiration, and the Navajo Nation puts out a lot of inspiring athletes again and again. It's been wonderful having you on today's show, Marley. Uh, let's come back and do it again uh, soon. There's people who miss your reports. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Because I really want to talk about a story that we didn't get to. She's an intellectually disabled woman who's a victim of domestic violence. And I had to do, that's her story in two parts. I'm following up with some other stories. And it's not just here on Navajo, but it's a national crisis of how these individuals just, there's nothing available for them as they become victims of violence. Let's set something up for next week. Look forward to it. Miigwech. Okay, I'll go in it. And that is the latest roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. We want to thank you for joining with us and come back again soon.